The number of acts alleged gross misconduct or misbehavior is relevant in assessing the suitability of a judge to hold office. An isolated incident may be evidence of the fact that the act complained about was an aberration, a lapse from the normal, and which is unlikely to occur. On the other hand, a pattern of conduct might show that the judge lacks judicial temperament and the ability to perform judicial functions in the manner anticipated by the Constitution and the Judicial Service Code of Conduct. This tribunal also has to consider the impact of the DCJ's conduct on the judiciary. It must be remembered that every single judge has the potential of preserving or tarnishing the integrity of the judiciary on every occasion. On 27th June 2012, about one week before the tribunal was scheduled to start its hearing, and after the DCJ had been served with a list of witnesses as well as witnesses witness statements, she contacted Kerubo and Mahano. The DCJ's testimony, testimony was that she wished to reconcile with Kerubo, while Kerubo stated that she asked them to change their evidence and to remove, to remove references that she, the DCJ that is, brandished a pistol and threatened to shoot Kerubo. This was a very serious undertaking conducted by a judicial officer. We are therefore not convinced that the Deputy Chief Justice can be expected not to engage in this kind of misconduct or misbehavior in the future. Her failure to consider the effect of her misconduct on her staff and the reputation of the judiciary at the time of her actions leaves us with little confidence in her ability to retain, to refrain from future misconduct, deeming to the esteem of the judiciary, demeaning to the esteem of the judiciary. The fact that she improperly contacted witnesses in the absence of the lead counsel to the tribunal also raises concern, concerns about her ability to refrain from future misconduct. She has shown an inability to control her behavior, demonstrating, demonstrating the strong likelihood she will continue to commit a misconduct or misbehavior in the future. Then even assuming that she was provoked by the way she was addressed and handled with disrespect, we re which we refuse to have been the case. After the altercation, there was enough time to cool down. But what did she do? She went away, came back with a pistol, and brandished it at the unfortunate woman who was just performing her duty. Surely the second highest or judicial officer ought to have done better than that. In our opinion, a judge who engages in lawless conduct and thereafter tries to explain it away with misleading testimony should not continue in office. The tribunal members, having unanimously found that the conduct of the DCJ on 31st December 2011 at the village market Nairobi amounted to both gross misconduct and misbehavior. We therefore recommend to Your Excellency Mwai Kibaki, Commander of the Order of the Golden Heart, Member of Parliament, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kenya, that Lady Justice Nancy Makoha Baraza the Deputy Chief Justice and the Vice President of the Supreme Court of Kenya be removed from office.